In this short video, I'm going to demonstrate a potential issue with the Nikon Z63 regarding shot-to-shot -shot variation in black levels. This manifested originally as an alternating magenta and green tint in the deep shadows of raw images when pushed. I reported this a few weeks ago on my running DP review thread, but didn't think it was significant because we don't normally need to match black levels between exposures. Today, however, a YouTuber named Robert May posted a few videos demonstrating what he categorizes as a flickering noise problem in the deep shadows on a Z63 when shooting video. After watching his video, I was able to recreate the flickering noise, but to a lesser degree. As I'll demonstrate, the flickering I see on my copy appears to be a function of the black level variability issue I saw on raw images, but more consequential for video since video involves continuous sequences of frames, so any variation in black level is going to be more conspicuous. I'm hesitant to say the difference in magnitude of the flickering between my camera and Robert's is copy variation, since significant noise variations between copies of sensors is exceedingly rare today. It seems more likely that we're just not entirely matching our camera settings, although that's a stretch as well since the configuration is so simple. I don't consider this to be a significant issue for my copy, but I'm presenting it nonetheless so that others can be aware and check theirs. I don't want to over-amplify what may turn out to be an isolated issue, but I also don't want to dismiss it prematurely since this is a brand new sensor design and we're in the early days of discovering any potential issues with it. Here is a burst sequence of four raw still frames with the exposure pushed in post. Notice how the raw shadow tint alternates between magenta and green between the exposures. And here are the raw histograms of two of those images as visualized in Raw Digger. These are the deep shadows right at the noise floor. Notice how the distribution across the color channels vary. This is what causes the visible magenta and green shifts I just demonstrated. And here are the raw digger noise statistics for those two same images. The noise levels are similar in both raws, but swap their levels between the different color channels, again representative of a shifting black level. Now I'll switch to the video manifestation of this issue. Here is the full scene showing NRAW N-Log at ISO 5000 and 6400, which corresponds to ISO 640 and 800 at the sensor due to how N-Log manages ISO. And here are the shadows boosted in both. Notice how much noisier the ISO 5000 video is. That's because it's the final ISO level before the sensor switches to its second dual gain ISO. Here are those same two videos with the DaVinci Resolve scope showing what's going on in the shadows. First the ISO 6400 video. And now the ISO 5000. Notice how much color shift is seen in the scope for the ISO 5000 video. Here I'll demonstrate how the flickering is slightly less perceptible when I take out the shadow tint by converting the ISO 5000 video to black and white. There's still flickering though because the actual black levels are different, which manifests as slight changes in brightness even though the relative noise levels are similar in the aggregate. Finally, I'm going to show you the flickering effect isolated in two separate pairs of frames, both taken from the same video sequence. This is the best visualization of the issue. In this first pair, I'm moving back and forth between the two frames. Notice there's no flickering visible and also no color shift apparent on the scopes. Now here's the second pair of frames. Notice the flickering and the color shift on the scopes. Again, both sets of pairs of frames were taken from the same video. The variation in black level doesn't occur on every frame, which is why the flickering occurs and also why it appears random when viewing a long sequence of frames. Here are those same two pairs of frames, but desaturated. First the pair that doesn't show the variation between its two frames. And now the pair that does. After finishing the edit for this video, I reached out to Robert May to share my findings. He informed me that Resolve's deflicker tool is effective at removing the flicker, so here is that tool applied to my ISO 5000 footage, as compared to the original. It's extremely effective, so special thanks to Robert for not only finding and publishing his videos on this flickering issue, but also sharing an effective workaround. I'll include a link to his videos in the description below. One last note, when I uploaded a draft of this video, I noticed YouTube's compression is completely obliterating the noise pattern, so keep in mind that the noise structure you see is not what the actual footage looks like. 